Praise the Lord, Sister Teresa Rosa today. Um, we're going to be going into the Word and having a Bible study. Um, today I want to talk to you about um, <clears throat> contending and fighting for our faith. Uh, we're going to be coming out of the book of Jude. And we're going to be going um, to Jude. And the verse we're going to read is number three. The word of God says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and to exhort you that ye should could earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Praise God. I want to talk to you about the word contend. Praise God. And we're going to um, to just kind of break down the biblical meaning of the um, uh, contend, which means to fight. And to, tonight we're going to be talking about, or today we're going to be talking about contending for our faith. We are in a battle, praise God, for our souls and, and to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And we're going to be talking about faith. We're going to be showing great examples of faith today. And uh, to contend, the biblical definition of contend means to strive, to strive against, and to struggle in opposition. Now, what are we struggling in opposition against? We're talking about contending for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And we are contending against doubt, contending against Satan's kingdom, contending about everything that is contrary to God's word. The second part of that def definition says to strive, <clears throat> excuse me, to use earnest, earnest efforts to obtain or to defend and to preserve. What are we obtaining? God has given every man a measure of, of faith, and we are defending this faith that God gives us. How do we defend that faith? We stand on the word of God, praise God. We stand on God's word because God's word has been proven and it's been tried. And we have found in serving God that God is faithful, praise God. And so we are contending to obtain and to defend and to preserve our faith. Think about when uh, summer is over and the harvest and you take and you preserve those vegetables and you get those canning jars and um, you put the vinegar and the salt and the different things that you need to preserve those vegetables. But before you close those vegetables, you put a seal on those vegetables so that no air can get, no contamination can get in, no uh, bacteria can get in to preserve it for a later date. We, if we need anything today, praise God, we need faith. We need faith and we need to contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. And that's what we're going to be talking about today, praise God. There's a real war going on and if we're going to win it, we're going to have to fight for it, praise God. You know, this thing is just not going to fall out of the sky and just happen. We're going to have to fight for what we have in God. We're going to have to fight to keep what we have in God. You know, God has given us a great victory today uh, in this election, and God is showing his great mercy even in the, in the face of de defiance and sin, and people turn back to God. People are turning back to God. There is a small time of repentance. There is a uh, place and a time to repent, which is now, and to turn back to God with all that is within us, praise God. And 
I believe over this last few months there has been some people that have got on their altar and began to cry out to a holy God that God we will not take this anymore we will not allow sin to be rampant and just take over that we have a standard which is your standard that is holiness praise God and we will stand and defend our faith with a true Christian stand up, hallelujah, and declare their God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, and defend your faith, praise God. The third definition is to dispute earnestly. And when you do something earnestly, you do it with all your heart. To strive in debate. There is a fight going on. And if we're going to win this fight, we're going to have to show up. And we're going to know have to know how to fight, praise God. Who are, and it also says to, to strive in debate. Who are we striving again against? Know who your enemy is, praise God. The, the enemy has come to cause doubt to cause unbelief, to steal, to kill, and destroy. We see that. We are not ignorant of Satan's devices. But those, hallelujah, that God has given a measure of faith, we will stand up and we will defend the word of God, and we will walk upright before our God, hallelujah. And we have a faithful and just judge on our side who fights in our behalf. Praise God. To re uh, the fourth part of that definition says to reprove sharply. What are we reproving sharply? We're reproving doubt. We're reproving every single thing that comes into contrariness with God's word. Anything that is in opposition with the word of God. We come against it. We bind it and we take hold of it and cast it down. Praise God. To, con to strive and to convince and to reclaim. It is time for God's people to reclaim the faith that God has given us to stand up mightily for the Lord and we have God on our side and you know what when you have God on your side if God be for you who can be against you praise God we rebuke and reprove this enemy just like Jesus when he was led by the spirit into the wilderness to be tested by God we see how when the enemy came up against Jesus that he used the word of God. He said, Satan, it is written. Praise God. First of all, we have to know what that word says. We have to know what is written. We have to know that word frontwards and backwards. And it's not just enough to know it, but you have to live it. And when you live it and you know it, it brings power. Praise God. <coughs> Excuse me, and the enemy has no choice to but to do one thing, and that is to flee. Praise God. When we know who we are, when we know the God that we're standing for is the only one true and living God, then we are victorious in our battles. Praise God. You, there's three important things that we have to know in this fight. The first thing we need to know in this fight is who our God is. If we don't know who God is, if we don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ every day, if we have not proved him and him proved us, praise God, then we cannot testify what God will do. But if we have seen God bring us out victoriously, won't he do it again? Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. When we know who he is, how do we know him? How do we have a relationship with him? We get in that word. If you want to know more about the Lord, you know, when somebody falls in love with somebody, they want to know their likes and dislikes. They want to do those things that are pleasing. 
And when we name that we are the children of God and that we go by his name, then we want to do those things that are pleasing to God and we will depart from sin and we will find those things in the word of God that pleases God and find those things that displeases God. We will love what he loves and we will hate what he hates, praise God, and we will be conformed by his word to just like him praise God we will become more in his image and we will stand for the things that God stands for and we will be against everything that God is against praise God so number one we have to know who our God is our God is Jesus Christ he is a savior he is Lord he is the almighty God he is the one true and living God there is no God besides him praise God we have to know who he is and the second thing we have to know in winning this war and coming out victoriously, we have to know who we are in God. And if we don't know who we are in God, then that lets the enemy know that we're confused and lets him come in and wreak havoc. But I tell you what, praise God, when a people will know who they are in God and they will know that they are children of the Most High God, that we are the apple of his eye, a peculiar people, praise God. We are set aside for his glory. We are children of the King. There is nothing that he would not do in our behalf when we realize who we are. Then the enemy knows that we know who we are in God and he can't do nothing with that, praise God. When you realize who you are in God. And the third thing we need to know is who our enemy is. Our enemy is not that person that's coming against you. It's not uh, the ugliness and, and the tearing down. It is the enemy, and the enemy is Satan. God will... Um, the Satan will use people, especially people that we're close to, especially people of our own household, especially people that we love. And the enemy, if he can see a way in, he will use that person to come against you. But don't, do not be ignorant of the enemy's devices. It is not that person, but it is the enemy trying to tear you down. We have to know who our enemy is and rightly divide, praise God. Just like in the wars that's been passed and the wars and the fights that have gone on, one of the ways the, that the leader or the general wins that war, they begin to study the enemy. And I'm not saying go in and, and start looking all into Satanism and all that. I'm saying know your enemy's devices, know his weaknesses, and and combat him on your knees praise God that's how we win this war we don't win this war by tearing our brother or sister down or tearing a person down we win this war on our knees in prayer because the the things that we are fighting against are not carnal but they're spiritual, praise God. And these wars are won on our knees, praise God. So we have to know who the enemy is. And, and they, you know, every general, they study the enemy. They know their habits. They know their weaknesses. And that is how they win the war, praise God. We cannot be ignorant of the enemy's devices in today's day. Uh, let us go to Hebrews 11 and 1. And I pray God's revelation to his word fall upon you right now. Uh, Hebrews 11 and 1. God gave me a revelation of this word, this scripture, a long time ago, and it's powerful. The word of God says, now faith. I'm talking about right now faith. Never look at that scripture again. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for. We know if it, there's something we're hoping for, we haven't received it yet. But the Word of God says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. And we know substance is something we can see. 
the evidence of things not seen. We know if we have not seen it yet, we have not obtained it. But now faith causes us to see the evidence, which is something we can see. Praise God. We're going to go to verse 7, 11, uh, Hebrews 11 and verse 7. By faith, Noah, being warned of God of things not as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became the heir of righteousness, which is by faith. Now just look at me, uh, look at, at, um, at, with me at, at this scripture, how um, Noah, look in his time. In Noah's time, there has, had not yet been rain. And, and God spoke to Noah and, and I pray God speak to you today because God is talking to somebody. God spoke to Noah. And Noah could have sat around and said, you know, argued with God like so many people do. But God, I don't see the way out. I don't see the end of the situation. He could have thought about all the opposition that was going to come against him. He could have questioned God, telling him to build an ark when it had never rained. He could have uh, um, questioned God uh, when they began to come against him and mock him. But the word of God says that Noah moved with fear. God is telling somebody, you keep questioning me. You keep on trying to figure out the end of a situation. But you just move with fear when I speak. You just be obedient and I will come through for you, praise God. And Noah began to prepare that ark. He didn't sit around and try to think it all out. He moved with fear and he began to gather the materials he needed to build that ark. He began to go out and obey the word of the Lord, not even seeing or understanding the whole matter. See, when God tells us to do something, we do not have to understand and see it. So many times we hinder the hand of God because we're sitting there trying to figure it out, when God is telling us to take this next, next step and we're sitting there trying to figure it out, we hinder the hand of God. But Noah moved with fear and he began to go out and do those things that God had spoke to him to do. And he began to gather those things. And he, in doing that, he saved his family. Praise God. Simple obedience may save your family one day. You may not understand the whole gist of it. You may not see the whole picture of the puzzle. But you just follow what God is telling you to do right now in this moment, in this hour. You maybe cannot only see but just the step that's in front of your face. But take that step in faith, knowing that God is faithful and that he will perform that which he has spoke to you. Noah was mocked and provoked, but he kept right on building that ark. He had not seen rain yet, but he believed God that spoke to him. Uh, we're going to go to verse, uh, chapter, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. And by faith, Abraham, when he called, was called to go out into a place which he should, after received an inheritance obeyed and went out not knowing whether he went now i want you to look at the scripture with me back in those days family stuck with family stuck with family i remember as a child uh seeing um little kids that had squabbles and and when somebody began against to come against that child Boy, they had the mother, the father, the aunt, the cousins, the friends, all of them against whoever was coming against them. And back in those days, in, in Abraham's day, they just did not get up and leave their family. That's how tribes were made. It's because family stuck with family. And so God spoke to him. 
God proved him and God told him to do something that was against what they did in that time. And when God speaks to you, most of the time it's going to be something that, that really doesn't make sense in the natural. But God is wanting to prove you. And not only is God wanting to prove you, but he's wanting to prove himself to you. And we see Abraham got up. He gathered his wife. He got gathered his nephew. He gathered his few followers and his flock. And he departed from his father's house. Uh, Nahor, uh, Abraham's father, they, they served many gods. And God was trying to show Abraham a more excellent way. God is trying to call you out of the crowd so he can show you a more excellent way. Praise God. And so Abraham went and he left, but God was just setting him up, praise God. God was setting him up for a greater miracle because God saw in his obedience that he would obey God. And we're going to go to Genesis chapter 22 and verse 1. And the word of the Lord says, and it came to pass after these things that God did tempt Abraham in and said unto him, Abraham, and he said, Behold, I am here. Here I am. And um, the word tempt in this scripture, we know God does not tempt man. And But in this scripture, if you'll look into the Hebrew definition, tempt means to prove and to try. So God set out to prove and try Abraham. And the verse 2 says, And take now thy only son Isaac. We know the story of Abraham and Sarah. How that God had spoken to Abraham when he was 100. And Sarah when she was 99. And he spoke that he was going to give him a son. We also see how Sarah tried to help God out. By giving Abraham her servant. God does not need your help. He does not want your help. He is God all by himself. And all that did was hinder the hand of God in their life for a time. But when they believed God and they began to stand on the word of God, we see that God's word came to pass. And Sarah became pregnant with Isaac. And in verse 3 or 2, it says, Now take thy son, Thy only son, honey, turn the light on, <laughs> whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there a burnt offering upon one of the mountains I will tell thee of. Now, I want you to see the faith of God, or the faith of Abraham right here, and God, and how... Um, we we see Abraham in the scripture. God spoke to him and said, okay, you can just imagine the love that Abraham and Sarah had for their son, their promised son of God. And God spoke great things concerning his seed. And, and Abraham dared to believe God. And we see um, that... Um, Abraham went out, and the word of God in verse 3 says, And Abraham rose up early in the morning, and saddled his ass, and took two of the young men with him, and Isaac his son, and clave the wood for the burnt offering, and rose up and went to the place of which God had told him. Then on the third day, Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off. We see Abraham did not doubt God, but he got on up. He did not question God. He did not say, God, this is my only son. This is the son of seed of promise. The only promise, uh, the, the seed that you had spoke promise over, Lord. And he said, uh, he went right out. He did not question God. And even though it was a hard thing, can you imagine being in Abraham's position when God is telling you to give up that thing you love and let me prove you? The Lord spoke to me about um, almost two years ago, and he spoke to me. We lived in Bloomington, Indiana, 
and uh, the Lord spoke to me. I had come to the place in God where uh, I was in a relationship with him and I loved him and anything the Lord asked me to do, I would do. But there was a time in my life when I said, Lord, I'll do anything you want me to do. I just ask you, please don't ever ask me to go back to Mississippi. And, um, so I had come to the place in God where I said, God, not my will, but your will. And God spoke to me and he asked me a question. He said, are you willing to give up Isaac? And I knew the story of Isaac. And, you know, it's a fearful thing when God asks you, are you willing to give up that Isaac in your life? Because you know there's fixing to be a loss. But if you will just trust God and obey him the gain is so much bigger hallelujah thank you jesus and the lord spoke and he knew mississippi was my isaac he knew i did not want to come back to mississippi but he was trying my heart and i said yay lord Whatever you ask of me, wherever you tell me to go, Lord, I trust you, Lord. I have tried you, Lord. I have proved you, God, and found you faithful, God. I will go where you ask me to go. I will do what you ask me to do. See, Mississippi held some things in my life that I did not want to revisit. I had uh, went through a lot of suffering in Mississippi a lot of abuse. I had been through rape. I had been through uh, much abuse, physical abuse, domestic abuse, and I did not want to come back to Mississippi, but I said, yay, Lord. I went home, began to pull the pictures off my wall. When God speaks, if we will move quickly, he will make the way, hallelujah. Even when we don't know the whole conclusion, the Lord said, I want you to go back to Mississippi because you have some old waste places that I want to build up and cause you to come conquer hallelujah and I tell you almost uh, two years later God has done just what he said he would do there were times when we cried out because we did not see the next step there were times when the enemy came against us there were times when our friends come against us there were times when ministries came against us and told us we was out of the will of God but how many know when you hear the voice of God and you done proved him and you done tried him and that you know that you know that it was him that no matter the opposition that comes against you you can step out on faith knowing that God will come through for you praise God verse 4 says and on the third day Abraham lifted up his eyes and saw the place afar off and Abraham said unto his young men, Abide here with the ass, and I and the lad will go yonder and worship and come again to you. I want to show you something, praise God, in this scripture. God had already spoke to Abraham to slay his son and to offer him as a burnt sacrifice. But God... He knew the God that he served. And just look at the life that he spoke. He said, I and the lad will go and worship. And we will come again unto you. Praise God. Sometimes when you can't see no life in the situation, we have to be like David and encourage ourselves in the Lord. Abraham began to speak. We're going up in this mountain alone, but we're coming back together. <laughs> Praise God. We are coming back together. Just look at Abraham's faith when he spoke this. Verse 6 says, And Abraham took the wood of, and the, of the burnt offering and laid it upon Isaac his son and took the fire in his hand and a knife, and they went both of them together. Now look at verse 7. And Isaac spake unto Abraham his father and said, My father, 
And he said, Here am I, my son. And he said, Behold the fire and the wood, but where is the lamb for the burnt offering? And look at the faith of Abraham, praise God. And Abraham said, My son, God will provide himself a lamb for a burnt offering. Once again, Abraham began to speak faith into his situation, still believing, still trusting in his God, who had asked him to go up and sacrifice his son, that if he was to follow through, praise God, and he had every intention of following through, that God would somehow provide a miracle, praise God. And verse 9 says, and they came to the place which God had told him of, and Abraham built an altar there, and he laid the wood in order and bound Isaac his son and laid him on the altar upon the wood. Now Abraham, at this point, after he had bound his son and put him on the altar, Abraham had to follow through every word that the Lord had spoken in his heart before he could ever lift that knife. He had to actually do the deed in his heart. And verse 10 says, And Abraham stretched forth his hand and took the knife to slay his son. He purposed to obey God no matter what the consequences was. But, and God proved him, praise God. And verse 11 says, And the angel of the Lord called out to him out of heaven, and said, Abraham, Abraham. When God speaks something twice, he is trying to get someone's attention. He said, here am I. And his God made his, a way of escape and gave him his son back. You know, God can turn a situation around in a blink of an eye. I know through this journey, there have been many times that I was in peril. Many times when I didn't know what was going to happen. Many times when I did not see the answer and it seemed like we was going down. But I've also seen by just praying and trusting God, God turned that impossible situation around in the blink of an eye, praise God. God. God is faithful. And verse 12 says, and he said, lay not thy hand upon the lad, neither do thou anything unto him. For now I know that thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy, thy son, thine only son from me. And Abraham lifted up his eyes and looked, and behold, a behind him a ram caught in the thicket by his horns and abraham went and took the ram and offered him up for a burnt offering in the stead of his son i want you to notice something right here when abraham spoke that god would provide a lamb god hearkened and heard him and saw his faith and um, that faith provided a lamb to be caught in the thicket and caused that thing to materialize. You know, when you're going through and you speak life and you speak faith, God will confirm the word of his servants. And Abraham called the name of that place Jehovah Jireh. God will provide. Won't he provide? Hallelujah. And as it is said to this day in the mount of the Lord, it shall be seen. But now we're fixing to see the blessing for obedience. Abraham blessed God by his obedience. And God was fixing to bless Abraham for his obedience. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham out of heaven the second time. And he said, By myself I have sworn, said the Lord, for because thou hast done this thing, because of your obedience, and you have not withheld thy son, thy only son, that I will bl in blessing I will bless thee, in multiplying I will multiply thy seed 
as the stars of heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and thy seed shall be possess the gate of his enemies and in thy seed shall all nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast ob obeyed my voice now i want you to take particular notice of verse 19 so Abraham returned unto his young men, and we see for the second time that God confirmed the word of his servant. And he returned unto the young men, and they rose up and went to Bathsheba. God performed his word. Um, Abraham told the servants, he said, we, me and my son are going up to worship and we will come again. And we see for the second time that God confirmed Abraham's word and allowed them to come back to the servants together. Even knowing what God had called him to do in his heart, he trusted his God and he stayed upon his God, knowing that if God had allowed him to do it, God could still raise him up because he had a promise. He had a promise of his seed being blessed and being a multitude of people. And God is a God that will not lie to you. Hold on to those promises that God has given you. Be encouraged. I hope the word has blessed you. We still have some openings in our Bible studies, uh, Monday through Wednesday. So if you would like to have a personal Bible study, we will get with you on Facebook Live, on video chat, on, in person to person if we are near enough, and we will go forth. So it's time. We have been given a space of time for revival, and it is time that we gather uh, our ourselves and we come before the face of God and and move with fear God has given us a space and we need to need to move with fear and go out and declare the works of God and and take this revival that God has allowed us by storm that souls may be saved and that the kingdom of God get all the glory God bless you I love each and every one of you stay in the Lord and, and give him your whole life every single day give him your all and remember contend for the faith that Abraham and Noah had uh, moving with fear when God spoke and you will see God come back in your behalf in a mighty way God bless you we love you see you next time